Hello, I'm Dalton Deland. I'm a columnist for the Berkshire Eagle, and this is Eagle Reels, where we take you beyond the news. My very special guest today, four-time Grammy Award-winning artist, Lyle Lovett. Welcome, Lyle. Dalton, it's great to see you. Thank you. I mean, we, we've worked together before. Indeed. Indeed. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you about that in a moment, but let me start uh, with your upcoming performance at the Mahawi on Great Barrington, May 10th. You've played there before. Thoughts about the Berkshires? Much familiarity with the area? You know, I have really loved to come. Uh, I, I, I have really come to love uh, Western Massachusetts uh, and the Berkshires. Uh, I've gotten to, you know, gotten to go almost almost every year that I've been touring. I get to go to to that your part of the your beautiful part of the country, and uh, I'm just always excited to the Mahawi. I have uh, only played once before, and uh, what a beautiful, intimate venue! I mean, to to be able to play venues that are small enough that you feel connected to everyone in the audience is uh, you know it's a real privilege, and so I'm I'm excited to come back. Thanks, Lyle. Well, yeah. So this, I know you toured two different ways. Some of your fans will know this, but I'll just state this. You know, sometimes you tour with a large band. This is one of your great in con conversation and songs, uh, which you're doing with Lisa Loeb this time. Now, you know, it was it was in it was in 1989 that uh, Bill Ivey from the Country Music Foundation invited Guy Clark. Joe Ely, John Hyatt, and me to do several shows for the old Marlboro Country Music Festival in, starting in New York. But we did a half a dozen shows over the course of a year or so across the country. And uh, with the four of us toured together through 2008. And and uh, and after that, Guy, Guy was, you know, Guy's illness was uh, a little... A little too much for him to hit the road that much. And so we, uh, uh, J John Hyatt and I started doing the shows, just the two of us. And I've continued that format with some of my friends. Lisa Loeb and I have been friends since 1996 when we first, we first toured together, and uh, so I'm excited to be able to uh, to be able to be on stage with just Lisa and uh, without any of our usual uh, musicians, and uh, to be able to just ask her questions that I've always wanted to ask her while she plays songs. So, Lyle. So then I have to ask you. So. At the Obama White House, where we did work together a couple of times, I remember you duetted with Sheryl Crow. You also did a duet on your Grammy award-winning Funny How Time Slips Away. Will you duet with Lisa? Well, I, I can't imagine that we won't join in with each other. I have a, a, a well more than a couple of my songs that I'd like her to sing on and uh, and I uh, she's she's suggested one of hers so I you know as you as you s sit next to someone and and uh, and listen to them uh, you you can't help but but join in I mean the show is really it's al almost we almost forget there's an audience you know I mean it really is uh, uh, well it's 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 the same thing that that two friends would do sitting around at home playing and singing and uh, and and so in, in that way uh, it, the the audience sort of gets to, to peek in the windows and see uh, it, it, the shows are different from every night every night tonight we don't always play the same songs and and uh, so so it's you know it's fun we just kind of make it up as we go and and uh, so so yeah I, I uh, uh, we don't have any firm plans, but I, I can't imagine uh, not doing something with Lisa. Yeah, I mean, as you describe it, Lyle, it, for our NPR fans, it sounds like the ultimate tiny desk concert and conversation. <laughs> uh, well, it, it is like that. You know, I, I got to do a tiny desk uh, early in the in the program's history, and and uh, and it really is like that. Just you know, you're in a room with people who feel like they're your friends and uh, and you're on stage with someone who's a friend and 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 it's it's just it's great fun to, just to see what happens now Lyle doing your doing your introduction I wasn't sure if I should go ahead 
because you have an honorary doctorate from the University of Houston and you're a well, hey thank you thanks for yeah thanks for knowing about that that you know uh, my parents that, that meant a lot to me uh, to, to get that to receive that honorary honorary degree uh, my parents both attended the University of Houston and and I grew up in the Houston area and in fact attended kindergarten on the campus of the University of Houston as my parents were still finishing up their uh, their their degrees going to night school well, that's that's the way they did it. They went to work right out of high school, and and they went to college at night. So it took them. They were able to only take uh, half a course load each semester. So it took them twice as long. And and in fact, when I came along, they had to. They would alternate alternate nights. They went uh, went to school so that one of them could be home with me. I remember going to my parents' graduations and uh, you know trying on my mom and dad's graduation caps and you know just having i just remember what a great great occasions those were and and so so years later to to receive an honorary degree from the university of houston was you know it really meant a lot to me well thanks for taking us there because I, I wanted to ask you about your folks i i didn't want to be pushy but i wanted to read back to you something that you may know that esquire magazine once once talked about your longevity and said that you had class, charisma, and consistency. In my experience, I think you're probably the nicest, great performer that I know in the business. It's a tough business that that makes it hard for people to be, frankly, as, as, <laughs> as open and friendly and wonderful as you are. And I did want to ask you, Take it back to your folks. Where where does that come from? This ability to be the guy that anyone who knows you know you knows you are, or even just hearing you can tell. Rarity a rarity in the business was it? Well, folks? those are kind kind words, uh, Dalton, and I I appreciate it. You know, it, it's uh, my parents were always supportive of me. You know, my parents didn't have the chance to think about what they wanted to do in their lives. They they made choices in their lives based on what they had to do. And I'm I think about them every well, every minute of every day, but every time I step on stage, I realize that they gave me the chance to make choices in my life based on what I wanted to do. And they were they were always supportive. My mom always said, uh, you know, it'd be great if you had a backup plan. And, and uh, but, but knowing how hard they worked to finish college, uh, I, I knew that my finishing college was uh, would be important to them. And even though I was obsessed with playing and singing and playing as booking as many gigs as I could in my college years. Uh, I wanted to finish college for them. And, and, uh, and, I, you know, I'm glad I did. I got to attend Texas A&M. I, I had a cousin going, going up to Texas A&M, which was about oh, 70, 75 miles from my parents' house in North Harris County in the North side of Houston. And, and, uh, in those days, it was, a as a, 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 a easy a commute uh, to go up to College Station, Texas, as it would have been to, to go across downtown Houston and go to the University of Houston. So I ended up at Texas A&M and, uh, studied, ended up majoring in journalism, uh, and German because of our family history on my mom's side. And, and um, uh, you know, I I was able to be involved with music clubs while I was in in school there at Texas A and M, uh, the an on campus coffee house, and I was able to play gigs around town. And and uh, when I was starting out and really uh, didn't have the the resume to get legit gigs, uh, I was able to talk my way into some places uh, around town, and those were you know wonderful important formative years for me while going back to those early years and in fact uh, as an adult uh we share something i can only say i share it because i have a shared love of of, of riding and, and, and horses uh i actually had occasion when i was a boy a couple times to run barrel races in a rodeo uh <laughs> Uh, now you, in a serious way, have been in reigning competition during the Texas Cowboy Hall of Fame. Um, you know, Cowboy Man, I know, speaks to your heart. Tell, can you tell us about that? Are you still doing it? You still have horses? Are you still competing? 
You know, uh, we we still do have horses. I I haven't uh, been competing as much uh, since our children were born uh, almost seven years ago now, but uh, we're still involved in the in the business. Still involved. We we have a stallion uh, named Smart and Shiny, who stands up at the McCutcheons in uh, Aubrey, Texas, a wonderful breeding facility, training facility, and uh, he's still he's still at 21 years old, still vital and still able to breed and and. Uh, uh, I'm really proud that folks seem to like his offspring. Uh, I I can't ever remember not having a horse. My, my folks bought me a Shetland pony when I was just two years old, and I grew up riding him. And he, you know, she lived until I was in college. And and uh, but we always had my my mom's younger brother uh, kept my grandpa's farm place going, and he always had a couple of nice horses to ride around the place. So I grew up riding with my dad around the, the farm place there in North Harris County. And uh, ho- horses have just always been a part of my life. I never ran barrels. We, we would have, uh, uh, we had uh, some running quarter horses uh, for a time and and uh, would find homes for them after their running careers. A lot, a lot of, you know, a lot of folks that, that barrel raced like those running bred quarter horses for barrel racing. And yeah. uh, we had, had some going to, you know, a great second careers that way. Yeah, it was quarter horses that 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 we ran, and uh, I have to tell you, I just feel lucky that I still have my knees. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I swore that uh, the horse was intentionally trying to see just how close this flank he could get. Well, you know what? That's 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 really interesting, isn't it? Because the horse understands his job, and and the horse, you know, wants to get around that barrel as quickly as you want him to. And uh, yeah, it's it's just amazing. To me, it's just amazing what horses teach us about ourselves. I've had the occasion to get to know many great horsemen uh, over my life, and and uh, uh, gosh, a, a gentleman that helps us start our two-year-olds is a retired saddle bronc champion uh, in the uh, PRCA Hall of Fame. Every Cowboy Hall of Fame there is, uh, he's in it. His name is Bill Smith. He was known in his rodeo days as Cody Bill Smith, and he's 80 years old now, and he, he comes down to our place and helps us start our two-year-olds. And and uh, you know you you bring somebody an expert like that in, uh, presumably to train your horses, but what they do is they they train you to be better with your horses. And one of his sayings is when when you get right, your horse will be right. And uh, there's just a lot of wisdom in that. There's a lot of wisdom. That's really beautiful. Now going back to that that country texas upbringing and i referenced cowboy man before and you know that was a top 10 billboard country hit um you however you started i think in a folk competition at the caraville folk festival with me you sang burt backrack at the white house (laughs) you know i'm not a label guy but it's a business of labels lately we have all sorts of interesting stuff beyonce doing country but seriously speaking you you break genres. You perform in so many of them. Could you talk to us a little bit about that? Well, you know, I've always liked uh, a variety of musical styles, and and growing up in a in a media market the size of Houston, Texas, I was exposed to all kinds of music. You know, my my parents belonged to the Columbia Record Club and would get a new new album every month you know and and uh, and because they both worked i was left alone with at home with their record collection uh, you know in the afternoons after school and i loved playing playing their playing their records so they were nice about letting me play their records but but they had you know they had big band records they had Ray Price records and Ray Charles records. They had Merle Haggard records and uh, it all just seemed like music to me and uh, I I just fa- I found myself being interested in songs themselves and the structure of songs and how songs uh, were written. You know, listening to uh, I was in first second grade when when the Beatles were just huge and and uh, listening to those songs and listen, learning about you know learning about American R and B 
through the Beatles was uh, an education for me. You know, the the gosh, the you know American bands like like you know a TV band like the Monkees recording those great Voice and Heart songs and Neil Diamond songs. Those great songs are what always came through to me, and uh, I you know I got interested early on in in trying to make things up. You know. Thank you so much. So that's that's really amazing. You know, you're just one of those polymath mu musicians and performers, and we're we're lucky to have you now. But I gotta, I I have to go beyond that. You're also a prolific actor. Uh, just to cite one that I connect with, um, I know you were in a, four of Robert Altman's films. One of them was Cookie's Fortune, which a dear friend of mine, Abe Lim, edited. Um, any any now i heard interesting stories about altman from my friend any stories about that or your oh. thoughts about acting versus performing music you know i'm i'm not really an actor i'm i'm lucky that every now and then somebody thinks of me uh, to do something with them and uh, i i'm always grateful for the chance i the process to I do it seldom enough that the the process is still a, a, a well you know kind of mysterious to me, and I just enjoy watching everything come together. I think about how you know how layered making a record is and going on tour and work with musicians. You know, making a film is such a collaborative layered process uh, that requires so many people and it's really fun to watch all the specialists come together to support one another i just in enjoy it uh, robert altman came to a show that that we did that the large band and i did in 1990 at the greek theater in los angeles we did a, a summer tour with Ricky Lee Jones and and uh, and played up in in New England with Ricky. Uh, we were up at, at the at Saratoga Springs with Ricky, and and um, but we played the whole summer. Altman came to the show at the invitation of his granddaughter, Sydney Courier. Uh, uh, Bob and Catherine Altman were there, and he simply called me up after that, and uh, you know my I. I but I remember where I was standing when the when I answered the phone in in my kitchen and and he said hi this is Bob Altman uh, you want to be in a movie just like that and and uh, and I said well uh, yes sir and he started telling me about he started telling me about shortcuts the film he did based on Raymond Carver short stories and uh, and in the meantime another script came up that turned into the player. Uh, and uh, Michael Tolkien had written, and and uh, and so then he asked me to be in the player. So the player was the first Altman film that I got to be in, and it's because of Altman, because of working with him, uh, and and uh, the exposure that I got through him that that I've gotten to do any other acting work in my career. Uh, most recently, I've gotten to be a guest on on the CBS show Blue Bloods. And it was at the invitation of uh, of a producer and writer on the show named Ian Biederman, who was at, happened to be at that same show in 1990 at the Greek Theater. Uh, Ian was a young, aspiring writer in those days, and things worked out for him uh, because of his uh, brilliant writing uh, over the years. And he's been one of the the producers and writers in Blue Bloods this uh, for the whole series. And he made up a part just for me. So it, it really is, you know, because of uh, it's, well, it's it's when people happen to be interested in me that they that they hire me. Uh, you know, I I uh, don't go out and. I don't pursue work the way uh, real actors do. You know, I don't, I don't, um, um, I don't work work at acting the way real actors do. I have a great appreciation for real actors and how talented they are in being natural in front of the camera. I mean, there's there's a, uh, uh, I I always enjoy the chance to learn from the people I work with when I get to do an acting job. So, Lyle, with your, uh, you know, prolific, uh, extraordinary ability as a songwriter, and with that experience with long-form narrative story in, you know, in film, television, whatever, uh, during the pandemic or at any other time, are there any other writing ventures we might expect from you or that you, you've been thinking about? 
You know, I I don't know. I always uh, I you know I try to consider all the possibilities and keep my options open. Uh, as a journalism student at Texas A and M, uh, taking photography classes was part part of our you know curriculum, and and uh, and I was always interested in in uh, taking pictures. My my mom in her forty year career at the Umble Company, which became Exxon, uh, started at the age of 17 as a secretary and worked for 20 years as a secretary before the company asked her to start tr doing training work. She became a, a training specialist for, uh, for uh, at first for other support staff, but then she ended up doing all kinds of training. My mom's a much better performer that that I and I'm lucky to still have her at age 94, and and but but her last secretarial job was in the publications department of uh, of, of Exxon, and that was during my high school years. And I used to love to visit her at work, and get to, I got to know the, you know the the editors, the writers, the photographers, uh, that that put together the Exxon publications and it fascinated me and and they would uh, they would oftentimes let my loan my mom some of their nice cameras over the weekend when we had family events and and so I got to play with with some nice Nikon cameras early on and and uh, you know I just was well in, enamored with the idea of taking pictures so I still love to take pictures and and uh, you know do I take pictures of the venues we play uh, when when we're out on the road as a way to have something to post in the social media without having to just put up a picture of myself or do a selfie and and uh, and so i I have quite a collection of those uh, uh, from over the years and and uh, yeah it would one day I'd love to you know publish a, a book of those kind of pictures and talk about the venues and you know just looking at a picture sort of inspires uh, memories of of what might have happened on a particular day so i i that's that's uh, that's a project that i would i'd like to do at some point lyle i'm yeah as you know i'm a long-term producer so a latter-day producer i'll have to say when you're saying that i was thinking to myself and one of these days we'll see you on stage in some configuration in which those pictures are behind you and you'll you'll talk us through a little bit about that from your from your history and your, and your stories so you have i that. like the way you think dalton you are a producer see I, you're helping me already <laughs> lyle finally may 10th at the mahewi anything that we can expect any particular uh surprises well i i am absolutely confident confident of this you the half half of the show at the at the Mahewi is it will be uh, stellar and you know as good as it gets and that that will be Lisa Loeb's half. She you know Lisa's just one of my favorites. Her mind is so inventive. Her songs are are just you know so captivating. Her voice is captivating. Uh, her, you know, I, I'm I'm eager to talk to Lisa about. You know, Lisa has has children as well, and and uh, when she had children, her career sort of took a turn t toward her children and and doing children's songs, uh, children's music. You know, she wrote the theme song and sang, performed the theme song for one of our favorite shows here at my house. Uh, uh, if you give a mouse a cookie. Uh, that's Elisa Loeb uh, at, at her best, and and so I'm I'm really eager to talk to her about about how her children have influenced her music because I I certainly know how mine have influenced mine. Uh, but Lisa, I, I'm just excited to be there with Lisa and to be able to play intimate venues like the Mahewi. Mahewi, to be able to play intimate venues like the Mahewi, uh, you know, is it's a privilege. It, when you get to be close to an audience. Uh, it's you know it's a different feeling and uh, one that I'm looking forward to experiencing on this run. Lyle, I can't wait. And viewers, run, don't walk if you can possibly get there. And if you miss that, catch another date on this tour or any tour of the the great Lyle Love It. Lyle, thank you for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Well, Dalton, thanks, thanks for talking to me. Thanks for having me on. And I look forward to seeing you in Great Barrington. 
same. Viewers, if you're already a subscriber to the Berkshire Eagle, thank you. If you're not yet, please consider becoming one. That's how you hear conversations like this. I look forward to seeing you next time on Eagle Reels and in the pages of the Berkshire Eagle. I'm Dalton Glenn. Thanks again. Lyle Lovett.